Hello, we are here with uh, eminent advocate Prashant Bhushan. Mr. Bhushan uh, recently brought out the Sahara and Birla papers which accused many prominent politicians of taking bribes from these two companies. So we are here, uh, there are certain, uh, the Sahara scam, uh, SR tapes and other, other uh, scam related to over invoicing of coal imports by prominent companies of India. So we are here to talk about many such issues with uh, Mr. Bhushan. So sir, uh, uh, so you recently uh, brought in the, uh, brought to public notice the Sahara diaries and and the and the Birla papers which the income tax department also has. So could you please tell us a little bit about what these documents actually say or portend? You see, in 2013, there was a CBI raid uh, on the Birla group of companies, Aditya Birla group of companies, in particular Hindalco, uh, in connection with the uh, uh, coal leases, in connection with this coal gate scam. And in that raid, apart from recovering 25 crores uh, in cash, the CBI also recovered uh, uh, some computer uh, information stored in the computer of the CEO of uh, the Birla Group, a man called um, uh, Amitabh. Uh, in his, one of the documents that was recovered from that, there were several documents which were recovered. Some of them showed um, bribes being paid or cash being paid to something called Environment Project J, uh, which is obviously to the Ministry of Environment or to the Minister of Environment. And uh, we know that around the same time, the Birla group of companies were trying to secure environmental clearances from the Ministry of Environment for a large number of their projects. So those clearly represented bribes paid for getting those environmental clearances. There was another set of documents which was recovered, one of them which uh, was from the computer of this uh, uh, Shubendu Amitabh, which said, uh, Gujarat CM, 25 crores, uh, 12 paid, 13 question mark. Now, the, unfortunately, though these documents showed payments of bribes and therefore offences in, under the uh, Prevention of Corruption Act, the CBI did not register any FIR on this matter, but just passed the papers on to the Income Tax Department. Income Tax Department did a somewhat detailed investigation into the matter. They questioned this fellow Amitabh many times, in which he admitted that yes, he had written Gujarat CM 25 crores in a note, 12 paid, 13 question mark. But he said that Gujarat CM meant Gujarat alkalis and chemicals. When he was asked what does C and M in Gujarat CM stand for, he was unable to give any response and the income tax department concluded that he was lying. They also found that there were a large number of cash which the uh, large amounts of cash which was being received through Hawala by the Birla group of companies and it apparently was being paid to various people. But despite all this finding contained in their appraisal report, the income tax did not refer the matter back to the CBI for investigation of these ostensible offences under the Prevention of Corruption Act and the matter was sought to be buried at that level. After that, we understand that the Birla Group has approached the Income Tax Settlement Commission for settling the matter and the hearings have been concluded and perhaps the matter is likely to be settled after which there is this apprehension that these papers which were uh, seized in the raids would be returned back to the Birla group. The Sahara raid took place on 22nd November 2014. Uh, in this raid again 137 crores of cash was seized from their offices here in Noida, from their corporate office of the chairman uh, and 
a large number of documents, some loose sheets, some information from computer uh, of uh, the from the personal staff of the chairman of Sahara were seized, which showed details of proposed payments as well as actual payments made to various uh, very senior political figures. If you look at this document, which was one of the documents which was seized, which is a again a computer printout of a spreadsheet. Now this document, you see, is a very detailed spreadsheet, which on this side, the first three columns represent the cash that the Sahara group received on different dates from different sources and the total comes to 115 crores. Thereafter, this represents the cash payments to different people on different dates, uh, different amounts, different people and the places at which the payments have been made are also mentioned. The persons who, has, who have taken the payments are also mentioned. Now, <clears throat> and it is signed by the income tax officer, it is signed by two witnesses and signed by one of the officers of Sahara. Several such documents were recovered in this raid on Sahara, in which, for example, this is another one which is partly overlapping. Uh, the only difference is that here in this document the payments which are referred to as cash given at Ahmedabad Modi ji in the other documents same date same payments they are referred to as cash given to CM Gujarat similarly there are <coughs> payments so there are 40 crores given to in Ahmedabad to Modi ji which is also referred in other papers as CM Gujarat. There are <coughs> 10 crores given to CM Madhya Pradesh, 4 crores to CM Chhattisgarh, 1 crore to CM Delhi, which at that time was Sheila Dikshit. These are all payments made between 2013 and March 2014. Now, Despite recovery of such very, very incriminating documents and in such detail which showed payoffs made to various senior political figures, the income tax did not refer this matter either to the CBI for investigation under the Prevention of Corruption Act. They apparently prepared some appraisal report which according to my understanding does not deal with these papers which were recovered, which showed these payoffs, etc. And these payoff documents, according to our information, were buried. And the person who was responsible for burying both these sets of documents of uh, Birla as well as Sahara uh, was a gentleman called Mr. K. V. Chaudhary, who was at that time heading the investigations of income tax and thereafter was appointed apparently as a reward as the Central Chief Vigilance Commissioner of the Central Vigilance Commission. Uh, first time a revenue officer has been appointed, though there were a number of complaints against him. His name appears several times in the entry register of the infamous Ranjit Sinha, the CBI director Ranjit Sinha. He was involved in interfering with the income tax uh, assessment of Ponti Chadha. He was also involved apparently in the stock guru scam where the matter is apparently still under investigation. Despite that this gentleman was appointed. So we had challenged his appointment as well as the appointment of the, another person who was appointed uh, to the CVC. Um, and because of our information that he played a major role in suppressing this uh, information, we have now filed an application because uh, when I got these documents sometime in October, I sent uh, a complaint to the CVC, to the um, uh, CBDT, 
to the enforcement directorate to the cbi and to the sit on black money saying that look these are highly incriminating documents and according to the principles laid down by the supreme court in the hawala case in the jain hawala case this matter should have been investigated as to whether these payments were made why were these payments made whether they represent bribes or some other kind of uh, payments but none of that was done and the matter was sought to be buried so therefore we have eventually moved the supreme court filed an application in the petition that we had filed challenging the appointment of the cvc and that application will be heard now on friday right so so you you the uh, uh, sahara diaries mention a lot of names lot of prominence but it doesn't specifically name certain politicians when you you say delhi cm or so or are there more number who are the other prominent politicians mentioned in the list well there is the uh, madhya pradesh cm who was at that time shivraj singh there is the delhi cm who at that time was sheila dikshit there is the chatisgarh cm who at that time was raman singh and the gujarat cm who at that time was uh, mr modi mr modi is also personally mentioned modi ji in that the largest payments of course are made to mr modi more than 40 crores in the sahara diaries the other one other politician who is mentioned prominently is one shaina nc of the bjp and one of the documents says that uh, she was being asked to intercede with the advocate general of maharashtra for withdrawal of some case which was pending against sahara perhaps the sebi case yes. which was pending which against sahara which is mentioned sahara. as the bombay case in the uh, papers in the papers, papers. yes yes so we, uh, what what right, right now what we have is the modi government is already in the know of these papers because they've already written to various agencies what is the kind of replies that you got from the government well i only received one response from the cvc after 10 days mm. saying that uh, will you please confirm whether you have re- sent this complaint mm. and uh, i immediately confirmed that yes i have sent this complaint yes. and i am not aware as to what they have done or whether they have done anything in this matter because unfortunately it seems that the cvc himself as the head of investigation of income tax was responsible for suppressing this so the income tax department has already filed an appraisal report back uh, in 2014 i don't 15, know whether uh, uh, 2015 probably so what could be the way uh, what would be the way ahead how 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 can these people or how can the matter be investigated now the income tax appraisal report has to go back to one of the investigative agencies or what could the modi government do right now to investigate the case well uh, of course no investigation done by an agency controlled by uh, the government would carry any credibility in this matter because when the names of the top people in the government are mentioned as the major recipients of these payoffs obviously you cannot trust any government agency to investigate this matter this would have to be investigated by some sit or some court monitored investigation mm-hmm. by the uh, supreme court mm-hmm. uh, that is what we have asked for now investigation in this case was easily possible because the persons who have carried the money who are the carriers of the money are mentioned mm-hmm. they are known to be the, the income tax had found out that they were employees in the personal staff of the chairman savant uday savant mm-hmm. this jaiswal and so on who are mentioned they were all identified mm-hmm. and their telephone numbers and mobile numbers that they were using had also been identified now it was easy to find out whether these people who are mentioned as being the carriers of the payment were indeed at those places where the payments are shown to have been made in this mm-hmm. that could have been easily investigated mm-hmm. then these people ought to have been questioned that you received so much cash have you delivered this cash what did you do with this cash uh, because they would have to explain as to what did they do with this cash this 115 crores cash which they have shown to have received uh, what uh, what happened to that cash so <clears throat> all that um, Uh, could have been investigated should have been investigated these persons who are supposed to have received the money 
should have also been asked of course they would deny it but uh, still uh, the investigation uh, needed to go into all these aspects they could have checked whether these people were present uh, on that date in that place or not the yes, persons who have received and the persons who have delivered the money and their phone records would have shown so but yeah like the billa papers clear uh, makes it apparent that the, the then environment minister uh, uh, was uh, made some payments by the birla group in exchange of certain favors of like the environmental clearance the hindalco company was seeking that point of time but does the sahara papers also mentions uh, what were the favors done to these companies in exchange of the alleged payments no the sahara papers don't mention that mm. and in fact some of the sahara papers seem to suggest mm. that these were general uh, kind of payments being made to uh, influential people in order to just keep them happy uh, and perhaps close to the elections mm. uh, as kind of political donations mm. but in any case uh, these many of these people were senior public servants mm. sahara certainly had operations in all these states mm. including gujarat madhya pradesh chatisgarh delhi etc mm. and Uh, one would have to investigate whether any kind of quid pro quo was there or not and whether they were just political mm. donations or black money uh, donations, donations. etc mm. which have not been shown by these uh, politicians in their uh, party returns etc the sahara papers also mention payments of 15 crores to the bjp office mm. uh, and all this happens at the time when mr modi had taken over as the president of the bjp prime ministerial candidate of and BJP. as the prime, prime ministerial, ministerial candidate, candidate yeah. of the bjp right mm. so uh, so it brings us to the larger question which is about the politics government corporate nexus which you also have been talking about quite often so um, a few months before we also you had also kind of uh, uh, been highlighting the sr tapes which showed the showed sr Uh, tapping into phones of various prominent persons in the government and elsewhere so and and also a few months before we have had we also came to know of a scam where both adani and ambani and various other private companies over invoiced uh, their the coal that they imported and the burden of which directly passed on to the consumer so it all points out to these kind of scam so we have three scams and what do you want to say about this how does it grow what do you have to talk about the Why? sr tapes mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. and the coal invoicing over invoicing of coal imports yeah of course those are major scams mm. uh, in fact the it's not just the sr tapes the sr emails mm. there was a whistle blower in the corporate office of sr corporation mm. who uh, uh, who uh, uncovered a very large number of internal emails of sr uh, from their corporate office which showed a very systematic attempt to bribe a large number of senior public uh, servants a very large spectrum of senior public servants just as uh, somewhat similar to the sahara case um again i mean those emails have been with the government they are subject matter of a petition which i have filed in the supreme court mm. the government has been asked to respond to that mm. but there has been no response for the from the government so far they have been just sitting over this matter mm. because a large number of these pay, uh, payoffs implicate senior people from the bjp mm. from the ruling party mm. of course they implicate other people from the congress etc also just as the sahara papers as well as the Uh, birla papers implicate congress people as well mm. but because they also implicate the bjp people mm. therefore this government has just been sitting on them mm. uh, same thing about the uh, uh, over invoicing of coal imports by the uh, adani group mm. as well as uh, some other uh, groups like reliance etc where the department of revenue intelligence has itself uncovered the entire evidence showing over invoicing through bogus companies registered in tax havens mm. uh, by the adani group etc through whom this over invoicing was done mm. 
All this evidence is available with the government, but again nothing was done. I had myself sent two documented complaints, fully documented complaints, one against uh, Mukesh Ambani, mm -hmm. which showed that 6,500 crores was brought in to 400% owned Mukesh Ambani companies mm -hmm. through a fictitious Singapore company, which had no assets, no income, no business, nothing. But the largest FDI from Singapore came in through that fictitious company. The Indian High Commission in Singapore had at that very time in 2011 written to the uh, Ministry of Finance saying that this is a very suspicious um, uh, FDI and this needs to be investigated. But the UPA government at that time didn't do anything about this. When I came to know at that time, Mr. Modi had just become the Prime Minister. I sent a, uh, a complaint to him saying that, look, this is the evidence which the Indian High Commission has itself written that this is clearly, which means that uh, this reliance has um, again um, siphoned out money from their company through over invoicing, etc which is also reported by the CAG in their uh, KGD6 basin mm -hmm. that they had over invoiced a lot of purchases and that siphoned out money has been thereafter laundered through this fictitious Singapore company and brought into uh, Mukesh Ambani's companies. Nothing was done. Same thing I wrote against Anil Ambani in that the income tax department had carried out some investigations about 750 million dollars again brought in through the Singapore route into Anil Ambani's 100% owned companies from a bogus fictitious company. Now these are classic ways of money laundering first siphoning out money from their companies thereafter laundering it and then bringing it back into their accounts. Nothing has been done about this. It was well known that participatory notes is one uh, very large uh, anonymous investment device through which black money is laundered and invested in the stock market. Because participatory notes are anonymous, you can't come to know who is the holder of that participatory note. They are purchased from outside and then through that investments are made in the stock market in India. I had written to Mr. Modi immediately after he became the Prime Minister that you are talking about curbing black money. Please at least stop these anonymous investment devices like participatory notes and FDIs from tax haven companies. Because when a tax haven company makes an investment in India, you can't come to know as to who are the owners of that company, who are the shareholders and the beneficial owners of that company. And therefore, this becomes an easy way, like the Singapore route, which was adopted by the Ambani's, is an easy way of laundering illicit money, which has been siphoned out from their companies, or which is crime money, or bribe money, etc. Now, if the Prime Minister wanted to carry out a surgical strike against black money, he should have gone against all these SR, Ambani's, uh, Adani against um, holders of participatory notes against uh, this uh, all these tax haven investments coming from tax havens etc or against um, these holders of the Panama accounts uh, from which came out in the Panama papers or the Swiss bank accounts etc he would have got lakhs of crores of uh, black money and that would have been a surgical strike on the people who are known to be holding black money and large amounts of black money. Mm -hmm. Instead of that, this demonetization is touted as a surgical strike when you know that you are taking out 86% of the currency in circulation. Most of the poor people, half the poor people in this country have no accounts, have no bank accounts, they don't have any ATM cards, etc and therefore they are holding their savings in cash and they can't use that they are in very very serious trouble farmers are in serious trouble um, people are dying in queues
people are dying due to malnutrition people are losing their jobs the whole economy has taken a huge hit especially the poor people in the name of carrying out a surgical strike on black money when in fact it is just a ham-handed attempt it's as arun shori pointed out it's a surgical or it's a strike against currency it's a strike against the legal tender thank you for watching and i hope many of these issues are now much more clearer and uh, we hope to bring you more information on this in recent in subsequent days